So this is the first section of the momentum and impulse chapter from the Further Mechanics One book. And um, well, we're basically looking at momentum and impulse, all the formulae here at the side, but I just want to uh, draw your attention to them, write them um, over the right hand side over here. So the first one is momentum and momentum is defined as mass times velocity. Now the units we use for that are, well, let's write down a shortened form of this. So MV, um, because it's mass times velocity, we can think of it as kilograms per meter per second. Um, also, we can measure it in NS, which is Newton seconds. So we've got our first formula over here, which is momentum equals mass times velocity. So we'll just highlight that there. Now there's something also called an impulse. And uh, one way of working an impulse is force times time. So you have a certain force acting on an object for a certain amount of time. So we can shorten that as um, F times T. And that, well, if you think about it, look at the units. Force is Newtons, time is seconds, so Newton seconds. Yeah, N, S. Now I just wanna go back to this momentum here. Just wanna talk a bit about that. Um, think about this as like the, the force that has something to keep it moving. Yeah, now if you have something with a very large mass, like a, a train, even if it was traveling at a slow velocity, it will have a very big momentum. It will take a lot to, to stop it from moving. It's got this, this energy, this force that keeps it moving. Whereas something of a very light mass, even with a very uh, large velocity, uh, would be very easy to, to stop it moving. Think of like a, a ping pong ball. You know, if that was traveling very fast, you could probably still stop it. It may hurt, but that would be much easier to stop than a, a train with all its carriages and whatever trailer bits, um, you know, moving at like five miles an hour or like a very low speed. It has a very big uh, velocity and this impulse. Well, this is this force which is acting on some sort of object over a period of time. And obviously the larger the force or the longer the time, the bigger this impulse. So I'll just write down the second formula over here, which is impulse equals F T. So that's our second one. Now impulse can also be measured in the change in momentum. So impulse equals change in momentum. And well, that's going to be, we look at the momentum after um, a certain action has happened, subtract the momentum before. Yeah, so it's like almost like the increase in uh, momentum. And you could factorize this and you could write this as uh, like this. So M and then V minus U. And um, this is called what we call the impulse momentum principle. The impulse is this change in uh, momentum also measured in Newton seconds if we want units for that. And then if you think about it, these two formula you can put together and you could say, well, force times time equals change uh, in momentum. So I'm just gonna put these over here. So now we've got impulse, no, uh, spell it right, impulse equals MV minus MU. And then let's put these two together. So we'll have force times time equals changing momentum. Yeah, because they both equal 
impulse. Now, whenever we do any of these types of questions, really important that we do diagrams where you put the forces on, um, you put the velocity, the impulse on. And when you do your diagrams, it's really important the direction is important. Yeah, so make sure that you have arrows pointing in the right direction. Take a direction as positive and anything in that not in that direction will take as a negative. OK, find the magnitude, which means the size of. So if we get our directions wrong, we'll need to make sure we change it to a positive in our answer of the momentum of a cricket ball of mass 400 grams traveling at 18 meters per second. OK, so we've got some cricket ball like this. It's got a mass of 400 grams and it's traveling at 18 meters per second. So I'm going to take this direction as positive in my working. It makes sense. That's going to be the direction of the, the momentum. And while working, uh, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So I'll just write uh, momentum equals mv. Now, m needs to be, mass needs to be in kilograms, our SI units, that's 0 0.4 times the velocity, 18. So I'll just work that out, 0 0.4 times by 18. And I get 7.2 um, 7 and uh, my units are going to be Newton seconds for momentum. And S, that's the first bit. Part B, um, so much lower velocity, 0 0.3 meters per second. Five tons. Okay, now uh, again, I'm going to take this direction as positive. Momentum equals mass times velocity. So my mass needs to be in kilograms. So remember that one ton equals 1,000 kg. So 5,000 times by 0.3, I think that's going to be 1,500. Yep, so 1,500 Newton seconds. Now look at the difference between the momentum of this cricket ball traveling at pretty high speed um, but a low mass compared to this truck much lower velocity but a much bigger mass ends up with a, a momentum which is much higher a body of mass two kilograms is initially at rest on the smooth horizontal plane a horizontal force of magnitude 4.5 newtons acts on the body for six seconds part a find the magnitude of the impulse given to the body by the force so first thing we need to do is to draw a diagram so this is 2 kg and it's initially at rest so i'm just going to put that here meters per second and it's acted on by this force of uh, 4.5 newtons and that's for six seconds and we need to um, find the impulse given so I'm going to take this direction as positive so the impulse one of the formulas for impulse is the force times the time so impulse is going to be at force of 4.5 times by 6. And that's going to be 27. So 27. And uh, remember, impulse is measured in Newton seconds. And part B, it says find the final speed of the body. Um, so I need to work out 
what that final speed is. Now I'm basically working out this, I'm going to put an arrow there. So this arrow at the top represents the speed before the impulse. And this is going to represent the speed after the impulse. Let's call that V. So I'm just adding to my previous diagram. I don't need to do um, a new one. Um, so let's work out what that's going to be. Now we know that impulse is also equal to change in momentum. So MV minus MU. Now we've worked out the impulse is 27 on the um, uh, on that body and uh, the mass is 2 so 2 V which is the velocity after the impulse minus 2 now it says it was initially at rest so the initial velocity is 0 so that gives me 27 equals 2 V which means that V equals 27 over 2 which I believe is 13.5, divided by two. Yeah, 13.5. Now we need to remember that um, we've, we're dealing with velocity, so meters per second. A ball of mass 0.2 kg hits a vertical wall at right angles with speed 3.5 meters per second. The ball rebounds with speed 2.5 meters per second. Find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on the wall by the ball. Now we're going to talk about this in a minute after doing a diagram. So here is my wall, like that. And I'm going to draw this ball here, 0.2 kg. And I have the the mass uh, or the, the velocity it's going towards the wall is this 3.5 meters per second and it rebounds a little bit slower, which is probably what you expect at 2.5 meters per second. And we have this uh, impulse now. The ball gives the wall an impulse. Yeah, and we normally draw it with this arrow with a little end to it like this. So the impulse that I've drawn there, okay, this is the impulse uh, given to the wall or exerted on to the wall by the ball. So I always think of it as some sort of punch type thing. So the ball hits the wall and it gives it this like force, this punch going that way. At the same time, the wall gives an equal and opposite punch back to the ball. Yeah, so we'll write down here that this impulse here represents the impulse we'll write this down exerted uh, on the ball by the wall now the wording is very similar but there's a subtle difference so this impulse represents what the ball gives to the wall yeah when it hits it because the wall bounces back and the wall doesn't move, the um, ball is given an impulse of equal and opposite back that way to make it bounce back. So whenever we draw these diagrams, um, these two impulses here are equal and opposite. Yeah. So impulses, impulses given to each other, to each other, other by the uh, colliding objects or the collision is equal and opposite. That's really important. That's going to be useful later on.
Yeah, so both of these impulses are equal and opposite. So this impulse is the same as this one. But one of these is going to be easier to work out. Now, impulse is changing momentum. Now, if I try to work out this impulse here, I'd run into problems because the wall doesn't move. Yeah, well, not perceptibly anyway. But we we do know the, the ball does move and we know it's change in velocity. So we're going to use this to help us now. Remember what I said about arrows, direction is important. So if I'm going to work out this, um, the magnitude of the impulse, I need to decide on a positive direction. Now, since I'm going to use this over here, that means I'm going to take this direction as positive because that's the way the impulse is pointing. So in my working, this direction is going to be positive. So impulse, now the mass is a scalar, so you know it, um, it's going to be positive which, whichever direction we take, um, times by the final velocity. Now that's going the same direction here as what I'm taking as positive. So that's going to be 2.5 minus 0.2 times the velocity before. Now, can you see the velocity before is pointing the other direction? So we take that as a negative. So times by negative 3.5. So these diagrams are really important. So the impulse uh, 0.2 times 2.5 is 0.5. And then we're subtracting. Uh, 0 0.2 times by 3.5 or negative 3.5 so we'll end up adding 0 0.7 because we're minus in a minus so that will give us an impulse of 1.2 newton seconds right you should now be able to do exercise 1a of pages uh, on pages 3 to 4 now um, you're probably studying this in year one of your further maths and you won't have yet done SUVA. You may have done it in physics, but you'll need SUVA uh, to enable you to do question five. Yeah. Now, if you haven't done it in uh, your normal maths lessons uh, yet, then you'll find it in the stats and mechanics um, book so the stats and mechanics book um, and it's section 9.5 and you, you'll also find these in the uh, formula book as well so it may be that you're doing this section not having yet learned about SUVAT so have a look through this section look in the formula book and as I said You've probably already done SUVAT um, at GCSE Physics.